In the Kulug bar, a fiddler is playing fast, rippling tunes with easy dexterity. How do I know? I'm in Edinburgh. On the pier, sun-scorched tourists hang their bellies over improbable shorts. How do I know? I'm in Edinburgh. In the Verity Burn, a man hooks a trout that starts rampaging. And I'm in Edinburgh. Or so I say. How easy to be two men at once. One smiling and drinking coffee in Leamington Terrace, Edinburgh. The other cutting the pack of memories and turning up ace after ace after ace. The Scottish poet Norman McCaig loved the landscape of Assent in the remote northwest highlands. He was born in November 1910 and the community of Assent is marking his centenary with a week-long celebration of his poetry. Top Left Corner, a new community arts enterprise in Assent, is organising the celebration. The week includes talks, readings, film showings, guided walks and Cayleys. Poets have come from far and wide to join in the fun. In his longest poem, A Man in Assent, McCaig called it this most beautiful corner of the land. He brought his family here for long summer holidays from the 1940s until the late 1980s. He had many friends here and wrote much of his best-loved poetry inspired by the nature and people of this place. McCaig's poems about the people and landscape of Assent are variously witty, philosophical and moving. Whether it's with a mountain like an anvil, a lochen like a stained glass window, or a caterpillar that looks like a charmed snake, his poetry helps us to see the land and nature in a new and fresh way. And why do you think Assent meant so much to your father? Well, I relate it back to his childhood when he went on family holidays to his mother's relatives in Scalpy Harris. And he loved these holidays, he loved the place and especially the people. Though I always felt that to some extent he felt slightly an outsider there, especially as a non-Gallic speaker, although he had entirely happy memories of it. Later, in, as a late teenager and a young man, he explored the Scottish Highlands by bicycle and went everywhere, including Assent. After the war in 47, he was looking for a place to go on holiday with a young family. And he chose Achmelvik, partly because he loved, loved the initial impressions of Essent, And it was a place he could fish, which was very important. But he also said it reminded him of Scalpe and of the east coast of Harris, particularly the coastal areas of Essent. And that was what brought him here. And it, in a sense, he was going back to relive his childhood. And it gave, I think, know the depth of an impression to him here that took many years to, to build up and resolve itself in the poetry which he began writing quite a lot of years after he first started to come here. Uh, the last word in lyric after lyric after lyric is really love. Mm -hmm. It's it just staggering. And, and uh, this is called Water Town. There was this hayfield, you remember? Pale gold, if it weren't hazed with a million clover heads. A rope of water frayed down. The bucket hoisted up a plate of flashing light. The thin road screwed into hills. All ended journeys were somewhere, but far, far. You laughed by the fence. And everything that was hoisting water suddenly spilled over. As well as McCaig's own poems, we wanted to celebrate new poetry inspired by McCaig and Assent. 279 new poems have been written for the Norman McCaig Poetry Competition. The judges are Alan Reich, poet and professor of Scottish literature at Glasgow University, and Alexander Moffat, former head of the Glasgow School of Art. Some of the poems that we looked at were uh, clearly uh, learning from McCaig, which is a good thing, mm -hmm. but it also means that they were slightly uh, reminiscent of him, because yeah, a great poet, you can't really emulate a great poet. Yeah. So the winners were poems which we thought were uh, in their own distinct way, but they had learned the two most important things that McCaig teaches you. One is the, the precise observation of actual things, and the other is the vulnerability of language and of people and the, and the sensitivity of that that you have to work with all the time. So those got us to the those got us to the to the winners to the ones that we thought were really 
the most impressive of the whole impressive uh, bunch. So the winners that we, we chose were the third prize went to Angus D.H. Ogilvie for a poem called Wetlands. Then the second prize went to Nancy Campbell for a very distinctive poem called most, the, most the Night Hunter Upernavik. And the first prize went to Pippa Little for a poem called Coal End Hill Farm, 1962. I don't remember the beanly or a man, his boots down the lonin, black as a wet day, his caravan under a butchered elm's imaginary wingspan, rusted, cantankerous, all that can's been done, my mother said, then lo, he's God's own one. I can't recall his singing of the kingdom come, or whispering from underneath his hands, if my soul the Lord should take. Or how he crept away, like Billy Blinn, awake long hours before the blackbirds, eager to begin carving off a dead lamb's skin, to roll one barely living in under a dazed yew, force tongue to tit, tit to tongue. Mole blind he'd move, from east to western sun, more whole in his Gomorra than the doosest thing, but slow, immortal, helpless as his beasts, to conjure up tomorrow. A lot of local artists are inspired by McCaig, and the celebration has spawned not just one but two exhibitions, one in Ullapool and one in Loch Inver, with visual and musical tributes to the poems. The most exciting aspects of the celebration is that 46 local school children have written poems. They were triggered by poet Kenneth Stephen, who visited Loch Inver Primary School, Storr Primary School and Ullapool High School, to introduce the children to McCaig's poetry and inspire them to write poems of their own. The children's poems have been on display all around Assent for the duration of the celebration, and we've made them into a booklet called Assent's Casket. The children have done a marvellous job of proving that Assent is still an inspirational place for new poetry. We're not just looking back to the past, but also giving space to a new generation of writers. McCaig said in his poem Rowanberries, I'll be that fine thing, an ancestor. And so he is. In the casket Mother Nature placed the texture of a hazel leaf before autumn's grip. Clouds hazed round the sun, fighting to hide it. A game played by goats dashing round hills. In the casket she sprinkled the smell of sand and sea at high tide. The last boat to haul in fish in a storm. Gallic ringing eternally in mines like a bell echoing. In the casket she poured the dreams of ravens gliding over trees. The best memory of a holiday. Laughter from the hearts of children. In the casket she mixed the spirit of an eagle guarding a nest. The gales whipping your hair, striking it against skin, and the prowl of the last wildcat. The casket was made of fire, armoured with dragon skin, locked with the curse of Mephistopheles. The gods could clearly see the casket would not hold, and exploded like a vast volcano, and created Ascent. <laughs> 